Greetings everyone, it's Diani. I am thrilled to welcome you back to another exciting video. Today we are embarking on a journey through the magical world of JavaScript, where we'll be enhancing the functionality of forms within the Power Platform. But hold on a second, before we dive headfirst into this adventure, do us a small favor, smash that subscribe button, show us some love with a resounding thumbs up, and don't forget to share your brilliant thoughts in the comment section down below. Your support is greatly appreciated. Alright, without any further ado, let's get down to some serious scripting. First things first, let's organize our project structure. If you are on Windows, open up your trusty file explorer. If you are a Mac OS user, open Finder. We are going to create a neat folder structure for our project. I usually start with the folders for the publisher. Then entities followed by tables, forms, and sometimes even one for ribbons or common library. Now, let's fire up Visual Studio Code and open our project folder. If you are prompted to trust the folder, go ahead and give it your trust. Let's create some JavaScript files, one for account and another for contact. For today's demonstration, we'll be focusing on scripting for the contact table form. While we edit, let's make sure our folder structure is pristine and organized. Oh, and don't forget to create that ribbon folder. Now that our project structure is looking sharp, we are going to start writing some code. Open up contact.js. We'll begin by defining our namespaces to make it easier to navigate our code. I'm also creating constants for different types of forms, like new, update, or read-only. These constants will come in handy when we are crafting logic tailored to a specific scenario. Next up, let's create a class for the contact table. For our demonstration, we'll start with functions for onload, onsave, and attaching events function. Of course, we'll be adding more functions as we go along. This is the basic structure for our scripting adventure. In the onload function, you'll notice that we're accepting the execution context parameter, which we'll be passing from the Dynamics 365 form or model-driven app form. We'll use this to grab the form context and determine the form type, whether it's new, update, or something else. Remember those constant we said earlier? There'll be a lifesaver here. We're also calling the attach events function in onload to make sure it attaches any necessary functions to form controls when the form loads. To keep track of what's happening, we'll be logging function calls so we can see it all unfold in our browser's dev tools. Let's create another function called validate ID number to be triggered when the ID number field changes. In the attach events function, we'll instruct our form that this function should be called when the ID number changes. Remember to use the logical names when you are coding. Don't forget to call the function when the form loads. Now that our code is nearly done, let's jump over to the Power Platform and create a solution. In the Power Platform, create a new solution. We'll call ours form scripting demo. Select your publisher and hit that create button. Add your contact table and form to the solution. And now it's time to add new web resources. Click new, then more and choose web resource. In the side pane, click choose file and select our trusty contact.js file. Give it a display name. A 
and do the same for the name field. Then hit save. Cool, right? Now we need to link our web resource to the contact form. To do this, click on Form Libraries in the ribbon. Then on the left pane, click Add Library. Search for the web resource in the dialog. Select the file and add it. But wait, we haven't told the form what to do with this script yet. We need to guide it. You can either edit it or upload new modifications using the edit button or remove it if it's no longer needed. Click on the tree view on the left pane to select the form. On the right pane, click the events tab. Let's tidy up things a bit to avoid confusion. We only want our script to execute, right? Expand the onload section and click the event handler link button. Make sure the event type is onload. Select our new web resource from the library dropdown. And in the function text box, type the name of the onload function from our script. Ensure the enable and pass execution context as the first parameter I checked. Then click done. Now you can go ahead, save and publish. It's showtime. We need to test our code. Go to the app and click new to create a new context. Open up the DevTools by pressing F12 on your keyboard. In the console tab, you'll see our script has been loaded thanks to the logs we added in our functions earlier. Check it out. You can see the form type is create and the validate ID number function is doing its thing. Let's clear the history and refresh one more time to see what's going on. Click on the file name next to the log to jump right into the file. This will make debugging in DevTools a breeze. Awesome. Let's add more functionality. We want to auto-populate the age and gender fields based on the ID number provided. In the contact.js, let's add an auto-populate related fields function. We'll add the code for this function and attach it to the ID number on change event. We'll also call the function on onload function. Now back to the form design studio. Click on the ellipsis next to our web resource and click edit. Choose the file, select our script file and then save and publish. Let's head back to our app. Create a new record. Input an ID number and tab away to watch the magic happen. Voila, our code executed flawlessly. And you can see the age and gender fields are populated based on the ID number provided. Let's generate another random ID number and change it to female. When we paste the new ID number, you'll see the change of the age is 38 and the gender is changed to female. Our code is running like a charm. And there you have it. In today's tutorial, we took you on a step-by-step -step journey from setting up a project, adding your script to Power Platform, editing it, and finally testing your code on the form. If you found this tutorial a thrill as we did, give us a virtual high five by hitting the like button. And hey, if you're hungry for more thrilling content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for tuning in and happy coding.